When picking a CRT TV for retro gaming, with them becoming a little harder to find these days, a lot of people will just tell you whatever you can get. But what if, well, might want to hold your horses there, Sparky? As much as I can appreciate a beggar's can't be chooser's mindset, I don't think things have gotten quite that desperate just yet. And you want to make a good choice. A CRT TV is a big commitment, literally. It's basically like getting married, and depending how your sweetie pie feels about it, you might be getting divorced as well. Flowers, chocolates, tickets to a show? No, it's a hundred pounds of ancient display technology. Talk about a romantic gesture. Kids always worry they're the reason their parents are fighting, but CRTs know they're the reason for the fighting. They're rascals like that. Okay, but because CRTs get kind of a bad rap for their size these days, including some folks who just won't even bother with them, this ties into the first factor of many different factors that I'm going to go over in order to help you evaluate which CRT to pursue. Basically, it's not going to be for everyone, but consider getting one of the ones that's not so massive. But how am I supposed to see? Well, don't be shy. Just scooch on up a little bit closer. Not to mention, if it's small enough, you can move it around more easily and oh, the places you'll go. Now, when I say small enough to move, I'm talking around 14 inches or less. And if you want to get really aggressive, you can push that all the way down to zero inches. Talk about a space saver. But check this out. This TV you've been looking at in these shots is 13 inches, but because we're pretty close to it, could you even tell it was that small? Sure, it's not for everyone, but I just don't think having a smaller TV is as bad as you might think. I mean, do I look like an idiot doing this? Well, maybe, but not because of the TV. I can guarantee that right now there's something in your home this size that you could probably throw away. Go check real quick and tell me what you found. The only real downside I can think of besides, you know, being smaller, is that it often means the scan lines or blank lines aren't as noticeable since each line is smaller. One of the main things that that people like about playing older games on CRT TVs. Scan lines, or if you want to be a stickler, the blank lines in between the scan lines, are essentially blank black lines that, as you can assume, change the way the picture on screen looks. This creates a visual effect that many retro gamers are fond of, in particular when it comes to 2D sprite work, and it's to the point that this visual effect can often be found, sometimes even called a CRT filter, as an option on more modern devices used with newer displays. In any case, when playing retro games on a smaller CRT, Maybe the scanline effect isn't as noticeable as you'd like, or maybe that's perfect because you don't like scanlines. I mean, not everybody loves them. If you want to go up in size from a 13 or 14 inch CRT, you're likely going to have to go all the way up to 20 inches, at least in the US. And this is where things get into I'd rather not have to move this around if I don't have to territory. While the average person in good health can probably lift a 13 or 14 inch CRT by themselves, I'd say that 20 inches and above is where you can no longer assume that. When you get up to 32 inches and above, you'll almost definitely need to have multiple people helping out. Not only because of the overall weight, but perhaps even more so because of the awkward weight distribution and size. I mean, I'm six foot four and my arms are just long enough to dance around with a 27 incher. That said, if you do need help to move a CRT, Regardless of what size it is, there's ways to get the help you need. A lot of people will tell you that between 20 inches and 27 inches is the sweet spot for a CRT because it's a good size screen for viewing and you can still possibly move it around yourself. But in any case, unless you're somebody who changes homes all the time, it shouldn't be too big of a deal to just have to move it once 
to wherever you'll have it set up, which would be the case for me, except I always feel the need to outdo whatever I did in my last CRT TV video. I can only up the ante so far, but check this out. Bench pressing my 27 inch Sony Trinitron Vega, and they say you can't get a good workout at home. I've used a 20 inch, 24 inch, and 27 inch CRT for retro gaming before, and found that the 27 inch size is where the scan line slash blank line effect really starts to become noticeable from average viewing distances, though that can vary from brand to brand. From my experience, the 24 inchers are less common to find than the 20 and 27 inchers, so if you had dreams of a 24 incher, well, you might need a new dream. The 27 inchers are the ones I've seen pop up the most, and this is across all different brands. Speaking of which, let's talk about brands. A lot of times when people ask me which CRT to get, they are specifically asking about a certain brand or model to go after. As a general rule, if a TV is a brand that you recognize, it should do the job just fine. The Sony Trinitrons, and especially the Vega models, often mispronounced as Wega, are generally well regarded, I can vouch for those, and also very common to find. These things were everywhere back in the day. The JVC D series is another well regarded model, and I personally have a JVC I art model, I think that's how you say it, that I've been pretty happy with. And no, it didn't fall over, I use it for vertically oriented games, just trust me, it's a thing. Okay, so say you find a brand that you recognize in a size that you've determined will be good for you. Are you all set? Well, maybe. You always want to take a peek at the back of a TV to see what kind of inputs are available. Pretty much every CRT has RF by default, but most people are going to want to make sure it at least supports composite, which is the yellow input. A step up from there would be S video, and one more step up from there would be component, aka good old red, green, and blue. Component inputs aren't always easy to find and are generally found on CRTs that were released in the early to mid 2000s. TVs outside of the US, such as TVs from Europe, can be found with the much coveted SCART inputs as well. If you're somebody who's always been perfectly happy with composite, or heck even RF, my advice would be to stay that way. Going down the rabbit hole of video connectivity and picture quality can lead to madness. So if you want to look into it, make sure it's because you actually want to and not just because you think you should. The idea is just to have a setup you enjoy. Some of the most passionate video game playing people I know are content just rocking RF or composite because they're so focused on the games themselves. If you've got friends rummaging around behind your TV and judging what kind of cables you use, it might be time to find different friends. Quick sales pitch, I would never judge your cables. When deciding on a CRT TV, I should probably also mention PVMs and BVMs. By the way, you're looking at a PVM being used right here. PVM and BVM stand for Professional Video Monitor and Broadcast Video Monitor. And the BVMs are generally considered the better of the two. These were most often used in television production, medical facilities, security monitoring, basically anything where more durable and higher quality TVs was required, probably not in your uncle's living room. They weren't available to just any old consumer like more common CRT TVs were. Okay, but so if these PVMs and BVMs are supposedly so much better, why wouldn't you choose one of these? And you guessed it, availability and cost. Much like anything else that catches the attention of retro gamers, we go after it and we go after it relentlessly. So they're typically not just lying around for cheap. And don't any of you dare jump on my bread bag clip bandwagon and drive the prices up on those 
too. I'm not so sure PVMs are necessarily better though, at least not for everyone. I mean, technically speaking, in a lot of ways, yes, they are better with one of the more notable advantages being that they tend to have more lines to display the image. But I actually prefer the way my Sony Vega looks personally. Maybe I'm a little biased because I've gotten so attached to it, but I've heard other people do as well. The thing is, PVMs do look different. I've used multiple ones, and due to the higher amount of lines they have to draw the image, the picture looks cleaner and not what you might be used to with the look of a lower resolution standard CRT, where I prefer the chunkier look it gives the pixels, but again, that's just me. I find the scan lines on a PVM look more like solid lines compared to a regular CRT too. I'd even say the scan lines on a PVM kind of look how they do on emulators running on more modern displays, which could be a minus or a plus, depending on your preference. In any case, because they look different, you might find that you prefer the look of a regular CRT. And for what it's worth, PVMs mostly come in smaller sizes, typically 20 inches and below. Look at how cute this little 9-incher with its handle is, though. But there you have it. What I feel are some of the most important factors to take into consideration when choosing a CRT for yourself. If you're curious what my personal personal recommendation is, it's a 27-inch Trinitron Vega, the one I happen to have. Gee, go figure. But again, that is just my personal answer, and a different TV might make more sense for you based on the criteria I've outlined in this video. If you've already got a CRT TV that you're happy with, then I would suggest to stick with it, even if it's one of those popular zero-inch models. I should also point out that ability to find CRT TVs greatly depends on where you live, and it's not exactly something you can pick up while visiting somewhere else, unless you drove there. Oh, and I almost forgot HD CRTs. Not everyone is a fan of these because of the extra processing they can do to the image, which may result in things like added input lag, but others do like them for their extra inputs and ability to support higher resolutions. I'm not into them myself, but I know people who absolutely love them. Also, sometimes people who don't own CRTs will write what feels like darn near a novel to defend themselves for not having one, like it's some sort of major life decision. They can certainly be interesting to read, and hey, just a suggestion, maybe a steamy romance novel? A simple, I'm not interested in CRTs should be good enough too. It's fine for some of us to have passion for CRTs, but okay if it's not everybody. It's our passion for retro gaming itself that unites us. But for those of you who do already have CRT TVs, I would enjoy hearing which one you have and anything you'd like to share about it. So for those answers and anything else you'd all like to say, Leave a comment down below, and I will see ya in the next video. He's the Red Cooper, yeah! And he's talking, talking about me.